they asked me to speak about SMEs, and this is a topic very close to my heart. In fact, I know a number of you. I've either interviewed you or worked with you before in this sector, in the SME sector. A lot of people ask, Senator, bakit SME? Why SME? That won't get you in the headlines. It won't get you on TV Patrol, definitely. Uh, I don't even think a lot of people online are really that interested. They're more interested in the political fights, in the contentiousness that we see currently in our uh, political landscape. But I always tell them, SMEs are important because we must. We must. It's an imperative already to support our SMEs. One clear way to get our country out of poverty is through SME development. Now, clearly, there are many ways to get our country out of poverty. But one clear, definite, proven way is to support our micro, small, and medium enterprises. During the last um, APEC, this was the focus of the APEC, to support our SMEs. And then this week, or next week, we'll have the ASEAN. And again, it is the focus of the ASEAN to support our SMEs. But as many of us know, it's not enough to just talk about it. We need to see how we can support SMEs on the ground. And a lot of people ask me, why is this your, the recurring story of your life? Bakit ka pa ulit ulit about SMEs? Well, it's because before becoming a senator, this was my life. I was a social entrepreneur for a number of years. We put up what we call the Happinoy Program, which is a social enterprise. We partnered with microfinance institutions to support Sari Sari stores and simple manufacturers in the countryside. We started this 10 years ago in 2007. And through that time, we found out that there was a very simple formula to support your micro enterprises and help them along the path to prosperity, to get them from micro to small, and to get the small to medium, and so on and so forth. So we came up with our formula, which we called the three M's, money, market, and mentorship. If these three M's are present in any given locality or any given geography, your chance for success becomes much, much, much higher. These three M's are very important. And for all of you here who are currently SMEs or all of you here who are aspiring SMEs, you sort of need to make sure that these three M's are with you. So the first M, money. Now, money is very important because without the proper financing, we don't have a business. In the Philippines, financing is still done relatively informally through friends and families or worse, through informal lenders like the 5-6 who eventually will kill your business. In the Philippines, for micro-enterprises, we have a very robust microfinance industry. Ito po yung direct na kalaban ng mga 5-6 natin. These are regulated by the Banco Central. These are all over the countryside. For your medium and large, we have the commercial banks. No? Some of these large companies, the banks are fighting over, competing on the interest rate to be able to lend to these large companies. There was a large company I, I spoke to recently, and their per annum interest was 1.25%. Can you imagine? No? Parang pinamimigay po yung pera. 1.25%. While you look at the Sari Sari store owner, and her uh, option for 5-6 is 20% per period, which is probably going to be a week. So can you imagine how far your interest rates are from a micro to a large? And there has to be a way to bridge this financing gap, to be able to bridge your micro, your small, your medium, and your large. And this is something we've been very focused on. We passed the Microfinance NGO Act last year. We passed the Credit Surety Fund Cooperative Act, which is one, of course, is for microfinance institutions. The other one is for cooperatives. But both of them are focused on how to bridge your financing gap for the micro. For the medium and large, they can compete at the commercial level. It's the small, which is currently the problem we're trying to fix. A lot of you here are small enterprises, and you do experience a lot of difficulty getting loans at a good rate. And this is something we continue to work on. One of the laws that we're trying to push is what we call the Secured Transactions Act. It's still a bill. It's moving in the Committee on Banks, but this will create a collateral, a movable collateral registry. Hopefully, that will allow SMEs like you to use alternative forms of collateral in our banking industry. In other countries, mga purchase order, ginagamit na po yan bilang collateral. Yung mga farmers po, ginagamit yung mga puno 
uh, o yung mga tanim nila bilang collateral. Dito po sa ating bansa, ang hinahanap, lupa pa rin. So we're trying to push for this Secured, uh, uh, Secured Transactions Act to be able to unlock more collateral for our SMEs so they can use that in banks. And hopefully, once this is passed, we'll be able to help solve this particular gap that we find in our financing. DTI is also pushing for a guarantee program uh, for your SMEs. And we're hoping that they can push through with that, with that plan. So that at each level, micro, meron kang mapupuntahan, small, kulang pa, pero kailangan natin ng bagong programa dyan, medium and large can go to a robust commercial sector and fulfill this financing gap. The second M is also quite important, and that of course is mentorship. This is uh, one thing that I've found through Go Negosyo, through our, our friends at PwC, how important this is. That with the right mentorship, your SME will have a better chance for success. Nakita ho namin in Happy Noy that a Happy Noy nanay who is a Sari Sari store owner may not even have finished grade school. But with the right program, which includes values formation and business skills, will be able to instill those values needed to be a successful entrepreneur. One of the programs that uh, DTI is now uh, institutionalizing is the Mentor Me program of Go Negosyo. It's a 10 week, 10 weekend program which pairs successful entrepreneurs and budding or new entrepreneurs in a very intensive program. Sabi nga nila parang informal MBA yung dating. Because you go through the paces of financial literacy, marketing, um, accounting, uh, customer satisfaction, all of these things, no? You go through it. And what we've found is that some entrepreneurs who have been in the business for 5, 10, 15 years still find it very useful. The Mentor Me program is currently one of the centerpieces of DTI, which can be found at our negotiation centers. And um, we're really quite happy with the rollout of DTI for this program. And maybe one day, some of you can either volunteer to be mentors or even be mentees. No? But what we found with the mentorship program of Happy Noy is that with the right intervention, the right program, the right mix of business and personal development, you can actually get your nanas who are not formally trained or formally educated to be successful. Now, talking about mentorship, one uh, law that, uh, actually, it's my first law, one law that we're very proud of is the Go Negosyo Act. This was my first law in 2014. And as many of you know, hindi po lahat ng batas na i-implement. Marami pong batas, papel lang. No? Hindi po siya na i-implement talaga. But we made sure that the Go Negosyo Act fulfills its mandate of supporting our MSMEs. It's based on the three Ms. At each negosyo center, the three Ms are there for every entrepreneur who, who wants to find or needs help. You have money, mentorship, and of course, market. From 2014 until now, with DTI, of course, at the lead, we were able to put up 470 negosyo centers. Some of you here, I think, are familiar with the negosyo centers. I hope that they will continue to support MSMEs like you. To date, over 800,000 Filipino entrepreneurs have gone through the doors of our negotiation centers, and it continues to support even more MSMEs. We're really quite proud of these negotiation centers because they're partly showcase areas, partly training areas, partly consultation areas, partly business registration areas, but more than all of those, it is a second home for your local MSMEs. Yung Chamber of Commerce po, paminsan-minsan, dyan na sila nagbabahay. Yung business clubs ninyo, dyan na sila mahahanap. And some of them are even based in universities. So the business students actually make it a place for their volunteerism as well. So these negotiation centers are there to support that second M, mentorship. But they're also there to support the third M, which is market. And this is one thing that we find to be one of the most difficult for our MSMEs, which is to be able to get your products out to market. Marami po sa mga MSMEs sa Pilipinas, unang-una, pagkain. They're food entrepreneurs. I think there's a number where more than 50% of entrepreneurs in the Philippines are focused on food. But the other thing that we find is that all of this great, delicious, scrumptious food is not really able to get out of their municipio. Hindi po nakakalabas sa kanilang municipio. Hindi po nakakalabas sa kanilang probinsya. Now, wouldn't it be great if we were able to really bring these products to market. 
if you're able to bring your services to market or if you have an ecotourism area uh, like Mike over there, be able to market that across the world, which is what he's doing. So, kailangan ho nating mapalapit yung mercado dun sa ating micro, small, and medium enterprises. And this is one challenge that a lot of our countrymen face. They may have the product, they may have the inclination, they may be willing to get trained and willing to learn, but their product is not able to escape from the confines of their geography. Yun ho yung isang tinatrabaho pa natin. In the past, the negotiation centers would focus on trade fairs, which is great. But we find that just focusing on trade fairs is just one piece of the marketing puzzle. The real part that we want to unlock is being able to connect your micro, small, and mid, your micro and small enterprises to your medium and large enterprises to actually form part of an inclusive supply chain. That's really the ultimate goal that we want to see. And we see a lot of this in our social entrepreneurs, being able to connect your community enterprises, your micro and small enterprises with larger companies. Of course, the most famous story of an inclusive supply chain is the one by Jollibee. You know, Jollibee, in 2008, made a decision to buy locally as much as possible. So what they did was they worked with a farmer's cooperative in San Jose, Nueva Ecija, the Calasag Farmer's Cooperative. And through a social enterprise, Catholic Relief Services, and through the local government, they were able to put together an inclusive supply chain. This is the gold standard for an inclusive supply chain. Uh, we'll show you some pictures no, shortly. But what we find there is that by this large company opening its doors, opening its, its coffers literally to smaller enterprises, they weren't only able to secure their supply, they were able to ensure the growth of that cooperative and of that community enterprise. Um, we don't have pictures. Unfortunately, we don't have pictures, but it's easy to Google. Jollibee Foundation onions, and you'll find it there. No? One of the other things that we've seen with uh, inclusive businesses is that it's not only manufacturing companies. We've had experiences with construction firms opening up their consumables to the wives of their construction workers. We've found uh, hotel associations opening up, again, their consumables, the soap, the chinelas, all of their consumables to the communities around them. We've seen how establishments like restaurants and hotels open up their commissaries to local farmers in the area, and they can even promote organic, uh, organic vegetables no, in their establishments. So this inclusive supply chain is another, uh, another area that we want to unlock further under that third M, which is marketing. If we're able to connect our enterprises to retailers, if we're able to connect them to trade fairs, and of course, more importantly, to set and establish supply chains, we'll be able to fulfill that third M. Ito pong tatlong M, money, market, mentorship. This is basically what uh, was my experience as an entrepreneur, how we were able to provide this for the nanais of Hapinoy when I was still out of politics and in social enterprise. But what we found was that for all of the good that you would do, for all of the help that you would do, you would eventually hit a ceiling. Dahil sa lahat ng ginagawa nyo, bilang isang negosyo, bilang isang social enterprise, at some point, Kung wala po kayong national policy, kung wala kayong national policy framework, eventually, you will just hit maybe three, four, five provinces. In our case, Hapinoy hit about 12 provinces. But we could never go fully nationwide without the support that we needed to see from government. So when I ran in 2013, this was really the focus. How, are we able, how can we be able to spread this framework to more areas? Hence, the Go Negosyo Act, the Microfinance NGO Act, uh, the Credit Surety Cooperative Act, all of these laws that we were able to pass, the Youth Entrepreneurship Act, napasa na po yung mga batas na ito. And of course, the bills that we filed and we hope to pass in the 17th Congress, the Small Business Tax Reform Act, the Secured Transaction Act, ito naman po, hindi pa yan batas, but we're pushing for it to become laws, all to be able to create that framework that can support our MSMEs better. Let me share with you a story from Iloilo. No? Uh, this is the story of Mirns, no? Um, si Mirns so, was an OFW. And uh, ang asawa po niya, si Melvin. We'll try to, let me see if my guy in the back has uh, the right pictures. Hinahanap ba natin si Mirns? O nasa isang computer niya. Tukwento ko na lang, Carl. It's okay. So Mirns and Melvin were OFWs in Brunei. And uh, when Melvin, when Melvin hit 55, he was asked to go home. Because there's a rule in Brunei that at 55 and you're an OFW, 
you're asked to go home. So, umuwi po siya sa Pilipinas with his wife, Mirns. And uh, they were left with back in Iloilo without much options. No? So, they said to themselves, magnegosyo tayo, maganap tayo ng paraan para maging negosyante. So what they did was that they went to the negosyo center in Iloilo. This was our second negosyo center put up. That's two out of 470 back at the last month of 2014. They met Mutya, their business counselor. And there, uh, they were able to come up with training programs. They were eventually linked to Land Bank and they were able to secure a 300,000 peso uh, working capital loan. And last, we were offering them to link them to coffee shops in Iloilo, but they opted to continue selling their, uh, their cakes online through Facebook. And I love that story, one, because it was one of the first stories of our negosyo centers. No? When I met them, finally, yung una ko pong tanong kay Mirna at kay Melvin, meron ba kayong kilala sa negosyo center? Kilala nyo ba yung provincial director? Kilala nyo ba yung, uh, yung isang business counselor? Kamag-anak ba kayo ni mayor? And they said simply, Wala po kaming kilala dyan. we went in cold, but we were able to get the support that they needed. In fact, they were linked up to Mutya, who was their business counselor. So first, tuwan-tuwa ako sa kwento dahil wala silang nakilala, walang palakasan, but they were able to get support. Secondly, is that it didn't come easy. Kasi iba rin po yung dating kapag lahat madali. In their case, it was very difficult. They had to attend seminars, they had to really commit to the training programs of the center, when they applied for land bank, they were turned down the first time, but because of the support of the center, they were able to get the loan at the second try. So, they didn't home it, but they were able to succeed eventually. Third is that they're a case of the three M's. They, have, they were able to get the money from land bank. They were able to get a lot of programs where they were mentored. And lastly, we were offering them to link them up to other coffee shops where they can sell their cakes and their pies. No? But uh, they opted to do their marketing through Facebook, which is again another one of our advocacies, which is e-commerce. So ngayon ho, they've cornered the fondant uh, cake industry in Iloilo. For all of you here who know what fondant is, yun yung mukhang matigas. And usually pang weddings, I didn't know in the tens of thousands pala yung mga cake na ganon. And they've cornered that in Iloilo City through their hard work and through their diligence. Mahabol ba natin yung photos? Yes, oh, here they are. Ito po yung photos nila. In one, two, three, technic. Ayon, okay. So, yan ho yung mga cake ni Mirna. Mirna's creation po. Yan po sila. Si Melvin tsaka si Mirna. Can we show the picture of Mutya? Yan. The lady ho in white is uh, Mutya. That's not me, by the way. Kamukha ko lang po yan. Pamangkin ko yan. Hindi po ako yan. That's, uh, medyo kamukha ko, no? Si Mutya po in white is our business counselor in the negosyo center. Now, why is she important? She's important because all of the frontliners at our negotiation centers are called business counselors. We do not allow them to be behind plexiglass windows with small holes where it's so difficult to talk to them. Parang, where do you talk, diba? Tatimingin mo yung mukha nga mo dun sa butas. We ask them to sit down with the entrepreneurs, offer a cup of coffee, talk about their issues, talk about and create a path to prosperity that each and every one of our clients in the negotiation center should be able to do. In their case, it was a path of money, which is to secure the financing from land bank. And by the way, we don't only direct them to uh, government financial institutions, we also direct them to possible private uh, uh, options, no? like commercial banks, rural banks, or cooperatives. A path on mentorship, because they failed the first land bank test because they weren't their packaging was not food grade. And through the seminars, they were able to figure out how to make it food grade and what supplier to get to make the packaging of their cakes food grade. And of course, the last one is market. So far, masaya pa sila with the online orders. No? Unfortunately, well, this is my point of view. Unfortunately, it's still a buy order basis. Can we show their cakes, uh, Carl? Yung mga fondant. We have a few there, I think, na photos. That's it. Oh, we don't have photos of their fondant cakes, but trust me na lang when I say, they're quite intricate, tsaka medyo kakaiba talaga siya. Another story I'd like to share with you is uh, the story of Almira. 
Let's see if you have photos. Yes. Si Almira po, um, we met in uh, Nueva Ecija. And um, yung kwento naman po niya, kakaiba rin. She is another former OFW. She was in Saudi for some time. Her story though is very interesting. Nakulong po siya sa Saudi. Because chinismis siya na meron siyang relasyon with the other, with the driver. Uh, so because that's outlawed, in Saudi Arabia, she was jailed for about eight months. Eventually, she would be pardoned. No? Nung naklaro na wala naman siyang relationship dun sa driver. But in jail, she was able to uh, do odds and ends work. Tagalinis dito, tagalinis doon. She applied actually to the jail to do some extra work and she was able to earn on the side. Another thing that she applied for was to create handicrafts habang siya po'y nakakulong sa Saudi. And, you know, while she was telling us this story, I was so moved because here is this lady who probably, you know, received the most difficult time of her life. Pero imbis na bumagsak yung kanyang uh, lakas ng loob, instead, ginawa niyang productive. Kumita siya based on uh, doing the odds and ends work and kumita siya sa kanyang paggagawa ng handicraft. When she got back, she was uh, linked up to the negotiation center and she used what she learned in Saudi to be able to do those bags that you see there. The first trade fair that she attended, she earned 9,000 pesos. The second one, she earned 23,000 pesos. And now, according to her, she gets a lot of orders again on Facebook. Wala pa siyang pwesto talaga. But through those orders on Facebook, sabi niya, Sobra-sobra na yung order niya. Even if she's gotten a few relatives to help her, hindi na nila kayang i-fulfill yung kanyang orders. They're all made of beads, actually. Crystals and beads. So why do I share these stories? These are stories of real people, no? Mga totoong tao, natulungan ng ating centers. Natulungan because of that framework of the three M's. And these three M's, di ko lang po gawa yan ng aking katangisip. Gawa po yan based on those years of experience working in social enterprise. If we're able to have those three M's at every level of enterprise, at the micro level, at the small level, at the medium and the large level, we're creating frameworks for success. At yun ho yung inahanap natin bilang isang bayan. You know, the time that sobra tayong feeling talo or sobra tayong feeling kawawa, tama na po yun eh. We, we've had enough of that. It's time that we create these frameworks of success and allow our countrymen to be successful. Allow our countrymen to use this framework, have access to financing, have access to the right mentorship programs, have access to the market, which I think at the end of the day is still a determiner of poverty, whether you have access to these things. Pag may access na po yan, may tiwala po ako na yung mga kapwa Pilipino natin kayang gawin yung kailangan gawin upang maging matagumpay. If we're able to create this enabling environment, we will find that all of you have enough have what it takes to be successful. And our, my understanding is that if government, one, step aside, make it as easy as possible for all of you, but two, create that enabling environment. Allow you to have access to financing. Anyway, loans naman yun, kayo naman yung magubayan. Access to mentorship. Anyway, we're really trying to push for free education. Why not free education for adults and professionals like yourselves and entrepreneurs? And of course, access to market, which at the end of the day, I think, is still one of the biggest reasons why our people are poor. Because wala silang access. Hindi nila madala yung kanilang produkto sa mercado. Hindi nila madala yung kanilang serbisyo sa mercado. But if we're able to make that seamless, whether it's through physical roads or online roads, whether it's through physical infrastructure or online infrastructure, if we're able to connect and create that infrastructure to connect our people, not just with each other, not just across negosyo centers, but across the ASEAN and across the world, we're creating that framework for success that a lot of us need. And I believe that a lot of us, if given that opportunity, will be able to maximize. So yun po yung ginagawa po natin. At the end of the day, MSMEs, why? It may not be the most popular topic in the world. It may not be yung pinakamainit sa balita. But it is a clear, definite, proven way to get our country wholesale out of poverty. To bring prosperity to our countrymen to distribute a lot of the wealth that we're experiencing now in Metro Manila to most parts of the Philippines. If we're able to push for MSME development, klaro po yung ating paraan upang makalampas. 
na sabay-sabay at tulong-tulong. And uh, rest assured, all of you here who are either in the SME world or aspiring to be MSMEs, marami pong gustong tumulong. Marami po, from government to non-government, people in the private sector, people already entrepreneurs, marami pong gustong tumulong. At kung magtutulungan tayo, I'm sure we'll be able to reach that prosperity that many of us want for our country. Thank you very much. Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Salamat po.